Keys to the Commonwealth, a podcast where we share the real stories of local community members who are using real estate to build personal wealth, along with tips and tricks from professionals across the industry. And now, your host, Landry Fields. Welcome, everyone, to the Keys to the Commonwealth podcast. It's Landry back here with another exciting episode this week. Uh, just so you're aware, if you hear buzzing in the microphone, that is because we are working off a battery backup uh, APC unit here right now as we have currently lost power at the studio, but figured out a way to keep going. So if you hear a little bit of buzz, that is the reason, but uh, we'll get through this. Uh, As always, uh, we're talking to real estate invest. We're talking all things real estate investing in the current real estate market. And today I have with me today one of the perfect people to talk about that. He is a full-time realtor of almost five years and currently with United Real Estate here in Lexington area. Grew up in Torrance and Ranch Santa Margarita, California area where he went to uh, Concordia University, Irvine, Irvine Business School and Santiago Canyon College. He's married to his amazing wife, Christina, and together they have two kids named Harlow and Bennett. Uh, Bennett's six months, Harlow is three, along with two cats and a dog. It is my pleasure to welcome Jeremy Perryman to the show. Jeremy, my man, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Did I get all that right? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There's a lot of words out in California we don't normally get here in Kentucky, though. I'm always afraid to, I'm not going to pronounce correctly, but as we start every episode out, kind of hop back in the DeLorean and tell me how did you get in real estate to begin with? Oh, I'm yes. sure that's part of like how you got to Kentucky is part of that story, right? Um, so we live here because my wife got a job transfer with Costco, and uh, I worked for Trader Joe's, okay. actually. Yeah, I graduated college. Yeah. I was familiar with Trader Joe's. Uh, got on with them, worked there for a little while. Um, I got into real estate because, as you can imagine, the California market's pretty tough, and you know, you're, you're not expected to get a house out there. Oh, kind of tough? Is that the word you kinda, used? Kind of tough. Okay. Yeah, you know, a cool <laughs> I've heard. Okay. Yeah, um, and so we just thought, hey, you know, this is going to be the perfect opportunity for us for, to start a family. Yeah. Um, and then once we built our house, I was just amazed about the whole process and the fact that we could buy a house, and I was ass- obsessed with it. And so I turned that into a career. Is that a thing in California? Like almost thinking like you'll never be able to buy a house in some sense. In some, maybe not everybody, but like a lot more of a thing there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, apartments. Yeah. Condos. But yeah, ownership. You figure uh, my parents sold their house what three or four years ago. Okay, fifteen hundred square feet, eight hundred fifty thousand, and now it's worth over a million dollars. So, you know, how get, many square feet? <clears throat> fifteen hundred. Good night. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My That's father-in-law's awesome. place. It's three thousand square feet. He paid I think three twenty-five for it back in '93. Now it's worth one point six. And he's still living there. He's still living there. He's never leaving. <laughs> they're gonna have to pull them out of there really okay so you move to kentucky you build a house and you're like oh wow real estate oh yeah and the experience of working with a builder was really difficult okay you know, to say the least i had to manage my own process or transaction yeah um and so that kind of brought me into it and to see that it was obtainable to work with real estate see where i'm from it's not you, yeah the blind to get in is way too high but out here, it's, I mean, it's its the West. Really? <laughs> Just reversed, yeah. I okay. mean, it's a lot more affordable. I mean, Kentucky's one of the top eight most investable uh, real estate investment uh, states in the country. Okay. Affordably. Affordability, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, that, yeah, that that's how it started. Um, and I was always really good with talking with people and just turned that into uh, a career, you know, and love working with people. And once you get that, and you ever read the book, um, Think and Grow Rich? Think and Grow Rich? No. Yeah, by Napoleon Hill. Okay. It's old. Um, the Burning Desire. Okay. Well, I had the burning desire, so I, I got into real estate. So it was a, a, an immediate transition there? Was it a uh, gradual transition into real estate? Um, I worked full-time at Trader Joe's five days a week from yep. five to one, and then as soon as I got off, I started real estate yep. and then went to bed. <laughs> That's how we do it. You have to grind. I mean, I remember having multiple jobs for years and I still got a few little side things obviously real estate now kind of transition to the other kind of thing I do but uh yeah it, it is what it is you kind of grind and, and so you've been doing it for five years now obviously yeah. mostly here in all the Lexington area and so forth and as you probably got to figure out Lexington's basically a big town small town kind of a thing in some senses yeah oh no, yeah I mean I, if you don't know them someone else does know them that can connect you yes 100 percent. yeah 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 <laughs> So then what, uh, so eventually you decided I got to make, 
jump it all in. <laughs> Some houses need to be shown between eight and five, typically type of scenario. So we got we got to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, my first year, I was fortunate enough uh, with the full time job, but no kids, to sell twenty four units. You know, and in your I, first year, my first year, that doesn't happen. Well, you know, especially when you don't grow up here, you know, you yeah. don't have a sphere. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm also saying. Like, like people that jump into real estate usually is like they're praying they get one or two their first year. Like, I mean, how'd you go to 24? Um, hustle is what that tells me. Hustle, lots of hustle, <laughs> um, a lot of weird interactions because of the hustle. You get those internet leads. I tell you what, man, that there, there's some stories uh-huh. there. Um, a lot of it really had that's, to do. That's the story with everybody, though. Internet leads. I mean, let's be honest. Right. <laughs> Uh, they're, yeah, they're not vetted. They're, uh, you never know who you're going to meet up with. Um, <laughs> fascinating stuff. But I, I got on with a really good broker, uh, Kim Barasset with Legacy Real Estate. Okay. And she took me under her arm. And you know, she's been, she was in the industry for 15 years, taught me everything I need to know. Because when you're in real estate school, they don't, they don't tell you how to negotiate. They tell you what a contract is. They don't sure. tell you what's in the contract. So this yep. is all learned at the broker's level. Yeah. And so I was, I was her only agent. That's similar to insurance. I mean, they kind of teach you some con- the concepts, but they don't teach you how to sell it, what, how to explain it, or really a lot of the stuff that's in the contract. They just teach you the different parts of it. And yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah. And so she, uh, she catapulted me. You know, we, we spent a lot of money on Zillow, which they hated Zillow, if you ask a lot of agents out here. Yeah. Um, but it, I really had no choice. I had to build my sphere. Exactly. So obviously then you, we kind of went through COVID uh, to have, during that time period and so forth like that. Uh, talk about obviously the market as it is. Um, there's a lot, I think we're at a point now where there's a little bit of growing hesitancy with the fact of potential recession or uh, unknowns in a, in a political or financial state and so forth. But the, at the same time, there's still a lot of uh, competitiveness out there with a lot of cash buyers and you know, so forth. So it's, Explain a little bit about more or less like the market here in at least, uh, well, it's a, it's a lot of places, but especially, you know, Lexington area, you know, what's kind of driving all that competitiveness? Well, I, I really think the thing that's driving it is lack of housing and that's everywhere. Um, millennials have entered the market and people aren't dying, <laughs> you know, they're, they're living true. longer. Sorry. That's, that's true. Ways. They're living a lot longer. <laughs> and uh, so they're staying in their homes a lot longer. So there's nowhere for millennials to really go. Yeah. And then when COVID hit, you have these low interest rates. It just was the perfect storm. Um, and so <laughs> you, you had all these multiple offers uh, and things were appreciating rapidly. I mean, I saw some growth of $30,000 in two months. You know, you figure you're going over that with appraisal gap. Um, but mm-hmm. as far as the uh, economy, I think that's where you're getting at with the recession. I don't see it. I get that question a lot just because when they did a L bar did a study three years ago okay. and we needed 20,000 single family homes and COVID pretty much cut that in half or cut down the building to supply those homes. Yeah. Um, so we're behind and we're supposed to grow by 400,000 people in the next 16 years. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't think a lot of people realize uh, that yeah, say that again. Four hundred thousand people in the next sixteen years. Yes. Or, I mean, I've heard a couple of different numbers, scenarios in that. But I mean, yeah. I mean, people aren't going to be moving to Lexington. Of course, we have the urban service boundary, which is limiting the uh, growth outwards. So it has to kind of fill inwards and up, I guess, in some senses. So there's a lot of opportunity out there, uh, and so forth. And and, uh, and maybe talk about the different areas. Like we're starting to see certain areas of maybe specifically Lexington, where you know, growing up here that I know, I'm like I'm. No, I'm not buying a house in that area or something like that. But it legitimately is all areas that are like those are the next ones to start where a lot of opportunity is, right? In real estate investing, of revitalizing those areas, building those up uh, from where maybe the stigma that they had and so forth. Are you seeing some of that for sure? Oh, yeah. Gingification all the way. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you can't, it's unfortunate. You, you used to be able to get a house with a FHA or a VA loan. Um, but in a multiple offer situation, if you don't have a lot of cash, you're just if it's yeah. a perfect house in the area, great school district. Unfortunately, it's it's a long shot. So a lot of people are being forced either outside the county, uh, like places like Georgetown and Richmond, mm-hmm. um, in Nicholasville, uh, or they go to the areas that were not once as desirable but are becoming more desirable. And it, it, let's let's face it, that that happens in growing cities, and it's going to continue to yeah. happen. It's just not happened here. I mean, really. We're just now at the point where, I mean, growing up, there were still a lot, plenty of areas to develop in Lexington, but 
yeah, we're starting to hit that where many, many other major cities hit that a long time ago. Well, we have uh, what I call an artificial bubble. Okay. That is being put on by the commission. Um, but that's a whole nother story. Um, they won't let builders build outside the service boundary. Right. They won't extend it because they're protecting the horse farms. Right. And so you have this artificial bubble that's making it so they have to use the land here. And a big yeah. problem, uh, Greg Buchanan was telling me that there's some of the land that they're saying is available isn't really available because the people aren't selling. Okay. So like there is land, but it's just, again, people are just sitting and holding. Yep. Or there's something on it, so you have to demolish it. So you're not working right. with a, a clean slate. And that's why you're getting a lot more p- apartment complexes out here yeah. as a result. But the funny thing to me is, and they <laughs> I fought this left and right, um, the city you know, wants to do more population density. And so that's why they're rezoning community centers to put more apartments up for builders. All right, so the builders okay, are... Ex- explain, on the, explain on that for somebody who doesn't know about that as far as community centers expanding like uh, do you talk about rezoning certain areas so they can be more multi-housing as opposed to single family housing kind of thing exactly and so the builders so now that they can't really build homes they're buying the areas within the circle right outside the circle in hamburg particularly and they're being able to rezone it because it's the comprehensive plan that wants to push density mm-hmm. all right so they're going to get their 400 unit apartment complex but we're not going to build more homes to solve the supply issue Seems interesting. So yeah. if you're an investor and you know that, you know, you have, you know that going forward, why wouldn't you buy more homes? Yeah. I think part of it, I mean, I think as a test to uh, a testament to even a uh, text I got today, I mean, as far as I think we're going to start seeing a lot of uh, older homes or uh, of that nature, especially downtown areas or something like that, where they're just starting to level older rather than renovate them. Mm-hmm leveling them rebuilding uh maybe bigger square footage or you know something like that on that footprint but maximizing that space by just kind of starting with a clean slate and rebuilding if you if the builder or investors can do so yeah oh yeah uh, see it in chevy chase see it in uh, 40508 um you see it a lot over there on uh, near limestone yeah yeah i think it's only going to continue as obviously you know downtown lexington is uh, rapidly evolving into something special Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. And as you probably heard growing up, people didn't go downtown unless it was like we go to you were going to a Kentucky basketball game, right? Yeah. yeah so. I have heard that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You didn't go downtown, really. There's no real point unless you work there. Or... <laughs> yeah. But it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting what's going on down there and a lot of the growth is coming out there. And I'm excited to kind of potentially invest more and more downtown areas type of thing that were for so long just you didn't go and invest in. Right. As far as single family houses or some of the stuff that's down there well, uh, uh, on the way to uh is it national it's not national i'm blanking on the street but it's off winchester road towards downtown mm-hmm. uh you pass uh frank's donuts yeah 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 every time i my daughter go to goes to daycare over there okay and there's always a for sale sign i've noticed this spring all these homes on that street and you know, they've been redone and they're selling yeah. And they're selling for 350000 Yeah. And I look at those list prices and I'm like, there's no way they're going to get that. And they get it. Yeah. So, yeah, 100%. I mean, you think about it. I mean, especially downtown. I'm like, once it's finished, there's so much of a draw to, like, actually actual downtown living that's not just a, uh, you know, a, a, a condo scenario that's built on top of one of the commercial buildings or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean... Anything you're seeing else out there as far as that goes in the state or in surrounding counties or Lexington as far as growth or where people are kind of starting to invest in or move to? Well, Hamburg's big. Yeah. And that just is the interstate. Is there yeah. more room to grow out in Hamburg? Uh, it, I keep feeling like they started this <laughs> long time ago. I'm like, are they still building houses out there? So, Well, right across the street from uh, Blackford Oaks Place, which is over there near Polo Club, yep. um, Ball Homes is going to have another development over there. Okay. And there's going to be townhomes and single family homes. Yeah, because they put a pause on new builds for a while, I know, during the COVID, as far as restructuring what it would take to be profitable building, obviously, type of thing. So it, The supply chain really messed them yeah. up, and that's why they're not doing build the suits they're, they're all doing spec homes. But, yeah, they're, they're going to expand out there. Um, I know there's supposed to be a school and a, a new middle school and a new elementary school, but that got put on hold. And then a 60-acre great park at the corner of Winchester Road and Polo Club. Okay. But a lot of people are buying over there. Yeah. Because the, it's appreciating so fast, right? Right. And when you have that brand new hospital that comes up. Exactly. 
People I need a place to live. I think people forget, keep forgetting about the brand new hospital. I mean, that's where I, I'm – for our investments uh, is uh, – I haven't told the whole story, but we're over there more towards the Eastland side, which I think is one of those uh, areas that's going to start uh, growing in, with new life, new blood, that kind of a thing. Because, you know, that hospital, yeah, it's going to change so much out there where it's sitting kind of between Winchester Road and Hamburg area. Um, anything more to that? I mean, I know you guys – you live on that side of town. You probably see it way more than I do. Um, yeah, uh, and there are also, well, you have Cabela's and you have Costco. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed, like, my Airbnb's over there. It's okay. It's over there off Pleasant Ridge. Okay. And it's it's booked. As soon as I put it on, it's booked. And we're getting close to $200 a night. And what I'm finding is, is a lot of people, and this is for the investor side. Yeah. Um, they're going to the, the horse park. They're going to Keeneland. They're going to Paris. They're going to Richmond, EKU for graduations. Okay. And you can't get that on the other side of Lexington, can you? No, you can't. So talk to me. I want to talk to you about that a little bit. So you jumped into actual owning real estate recently as well. So we're kind of both newbies in this. I went <laughs> multiplex. You went Airbnb. I started more or less focusing on Airbnb, but that didn't happen. That's kind of put on the back burner for now. But yeah, how's that been? You self-managing your first one right now? And I'm it, sure that that itch is only growing, right? Oh, I I, I can't wait to refinance this <laughs> and buy another one. It's a, it's a... It's very profitable. Uh, two of my clients actually were into it prior, and they actually turned me on to it. Okay. We, we got them under contract on a home over there in Gardenside, and they were talking about how traveling nurses need a place to stay. Then you got Keeneland, um, and it started really changing the way I thought about short term. You know, not just in between houses. Yeah. Um, my first clients or my first tenants, their house burned down, and so they needed a place to live before their next rental would start up, and so they they booked it for two weeks. And then I got people for graduations. So it's, it, I guess I was just surprised at the market for it. And I thought, have it was you been be even still more surprised or having been in it as again? Like, not surprised anymore. Okay. When I saw the, the occupancy rate, and then uh, Lexington, I think, is number 32 in the country for demanded or for Airbnb demand. Because I've heard some, some stats. I mean, obviously, there's more or less a window of time where obviously there's seasonal. The, Bigger dips in seasonal aspect here, obviously, for different things. Obviously, uh, Keeneland kind of bookending the most for the most part that bigger window type of thing. But yeah, I think to your point, like being on near the interstate is probably helping out with that in some respects. As there's a lot more availability from just travel in general. Yeah, it's interesting. If you can turn it over in a day, which yeah. I don't recommend unless you have a really good team. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't a family stay at an Airbnb versus a hotel room? Right. How's that been kind of building a team, <laughs> not knowing what you don't know, and then learning it in the process as far as uh, managing your own Airbnb? Well, uh, duvets are very important. Uh, white towels are very important. Okay. Uh, lots of bleach and uh, making sure that you, know, you, you have backups because you don't want to do 10 loads of laundry every turnaround. You know, and it really yeah. depends on how many people you have staying there. You yeah. Know, I got uh, four beds. Okay. And so you think, hey, you got to do all that laundry. And then you got to put it back on, and then you got to uh, make sure that you have all the towels and everything. So developing a team has been—it's it, been gr a growing experience and a lot of fun, actually. Um, but we're still working out the kinks. Yeah. You know, um, I think my my team tonight is going to a laundromat to do just throw in ten different loads to get her done, <laughs> and then um, and then we're going to start using duvets and pillow covers so that right. way we don't we just wash those right just washing just all learn, the comforters learn as you go kind of a thing yeah that's i mean that's part of it that's the best way to learn sometimes just start uh, jumping all in now um because correct me if i'm wrong so your airbnb there's a lot of times differences between airbnb of like here's just a obviously a place to stay we need a place to stay versus a airbnb that's obviously a place to stay but is more of a destination or has a draw itself as something yours is more of just a convenience if i remember that correctly right and even then it's still you know maximizing beyond what you thought it was going to do i bet and that's that's the difference you know when i when i looked at airbnb in the past i thought of it being a destination yeah but no it's it's really simply i mean if if, if you have a family of seven right that's going to be a couple of hotel rooms but if you can get yeah. the same exact thing in your own house for $170, that, that makes a lot more sense for a lot of people. And so that that's the difference. Um, but yeah, there are Airbnbs. I have a good friend who I mentioned earlier um, before the podcast started, uh, Patrick Carter. He's got a bunch of cabins out in the gorge, and that's yeah. destination. Right, exactly. And believe it or not, it's not just seasonal out there. It's yes, true. No, you know, yeah, we've talked about that in the podcast. They get, they get Gatlinburg-esque 
uh, occupancy rates out there. Yeah. <laughs> there really is no down, real down season unless it's like snow at two feet and, or something <laughs> like that. I don't even know. Or, hey, but, they might have to extend the reservation because they can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but uh, as far as far as I mean, real estate and everything like that, what are some of the, you have any, and everybody's got crazy stories. You got any interesting stories uh, as far as from a realtor perspective or oh, Airbnb host perspective already? Oh, uh, I'm sure you, I know you've got them. What's well, one that sticks out? Well, the, the the thing that, you know, my first tenant, you know, their house burnt down. I thought that was very unique. First tenant of the Airbnb? We, their house burnt down, so they needed a place to stay, and that's why they stayed there. Um, but, man, uh, one of my first closings was actually with my mother-in-law and Chase Holman. He was a lender. Yeah, we know um, Chase here. It was a flip, all right? Yeah. And the, the the guy that the seller bought it at, at uh, the master commissioner sale. Okay. And was it Mr. Cooper was the um, lender. But Mr. Cooper neglected to tell the seizing company that they sold the house. Think about that. They forgot to tell the seizing company that they, they, they sold the house. So we're doing the walkthrough at 11 a.m. And everything's great. The house is sparkling. Uh, we go to close at 2 p.m. And we go to take photos in front of the house. And it had been broken into, locks changed, totally seized. We had the deed and everything. Uh, the officer that we called, they said, oh, well, you can't enter this. This is not your house. What do you mean it's not in our house? We just, my mother-in-law just purchased it you know, an hour ago. Oh, yeah. And it was all because they did not tell the, the seizing company that they sold the house during uh, an auction. What? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, how, how did that... How did you reverse all that then? Was it easy that calls. was it was it an easy process? Like this just never happened? What type uh, of a thing? Or I'm sure it you seems like a complicated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> was definitely not easy. Um, oh man! But you know, attorneys got involved. Um, the seller was very graceful or great gracious uh, with how he handled yeah. it. He paid for all the repairs. Um, I don't never. I don't know if you ever got paid from the season. So, did she, were you able to get the house, or did you have to start all over again? Oh, we were able to get the house. Okay, she moved in that. Just night. not that. Oh, she. Okay, you still got in that day. We still got in. that wow. day. Wow. But I mean, you know, it, it's unsettling when you're moving into a house that yeah. was just broken into. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, that's that is a doozy of a story right there. That's amazing. Uh, any insurance related things? I know we were talking about that. That you kind of. We, you know, obviously we do insurance and so forth like that. But as far as protecting your investments, you know, I know you were talking about umbrella policies and so forth like that and how important yeah. that can be. Um, you know, I used to have an LLC, but I, uh, when I was doing wholesaling before I became a real estate agent. I forgot you were doing that. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit again about wholesaling. We're going to oh. talk about it more for sure. But like, well, how'd you start out in wholesaling? How did you... Uh, Oh man, you didn't see all those ads on Facebook? Get rich, right? You know, it's little transact. signs. We buy, we pay cash we on pay the sale. Cash. Yeah, and then we just uh, sign the contract. Man, we don't, we don't need money. Was that kind of at the beginning of the real estate uh, story for you, or was that like in the middle, just kind of like another thing? Oh, kind of figuring out. Very much, man. I was, I was on there purchasing uh, phone lists, you know, of landlords mm -hmm. and getting on there and hiring a guy in India to find me the numbers on these lists so I can call the landlord directly and. I mean, I, I got some people on the phone, but the reason why I got out of it is, is you know, the wholesaling is where you, you offer someone that's down on their luck, yeah. about to be foreclosed upon, yep. probate some money to make it right, right, if they're, if they're behind on payments. And then you get to take in the rest of the, the capital, right, if the yeah. house is worth more. Um, there was this one time I met this guy. I just saw the house was vacant, you know, long grass, sure sign of a vacant home. Uh, sent a bunch of letters to him. He actually called me and said, hey, you want to see it? I said, sure. So I meet him at the house, and he said that, uh, hey, you know, whatever you see here, just don't tell anybody. The house has now been sold, so I don't feel as bad telling the story. <laughs> um, but I, I step in, and the floor is really, like, soggy. I'm like, man, is this on a crawl space? Why, why is it pushing? Like, it's giving. This looks like it's a slab. What's going on? He's like, no, no, it's a slab. And then I look up, and it looked like a scene out of Indiana Jones. There was whole, and, and all the furniture was there. That was the weird thing. Like, all the furniture, it looked like someone just got up in the middle of the night and left. But there was cobwebs everywhere, spiders. You see daylight, you know, through the roof. And, you know, I'm like, well, how, how much do you own this? He's like, oh, 109000 I said, well, I, the ARV on this is like one twenty five. So I, I think you should probably get an attorney and get some help, because I don't think there's anything to, to do here. Um, and it's since oh. been flipped, which and, really, and I almost sold it as a real estate agent, which was funny, but, um, it, it looks great. 
Interesting. Yeah. Well, after that experience, though, I was just like, eh, you know, do I want to be around people or, you know, be in a position where you know, I'm seeing people and the really down on their luck? Yeah. Or should I go on the, the sales side of it? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, switching gears here a little bit, you got any personal or professional goals you're kind of working on this year? Uh, more rentals. More rentals. I always tell my clients, they always say, hey, is this market going to go down? I said, well, I'm yeah. buying real estate. Would I be riding, buying real estate if uh, it's going to go down? They're like, no. 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 It's, it historically does not. No. Especially here. Like you said, we talked about a lot. Uh, what's one of your uh, go f- uh, go-to kind of favorite food dishes or comfort food? Uh, barbecue. Okay. Is that a big thing in California? N- no. But, you know, there's 38 million people in California. <laughs> it's so going to be there somewhere, right? It's, it's somewhere. Uh, I was on so barbecue. did you appreciate it before you came to Kentucky or after you came? What was the... So my uncle started a barbecue team, uh, and he, he, I joined it, and we used to do some competitions, 150 teams, believe it or not, and we came in first. Really? So Okay. Yeah, multiple times. So being a connoisseur in that sense, what's your favorite barbecue place here locally? Oh, geez, that's a tough one. Well, Bucky's. I just went to Bucky's yesterday. No. Yeah, their brisket's I've on heard point. that they, like, do it every day. Like, really? Their brisket is on point. I feel like I'm the only person that hasn't been to Bucky's yet. Like... I mean, it's it's out there. Like it's <laughs> it's it's gonna take. I it's if, very, I'd have to be very intentional to, to be just going to Bucky's. But have you been to a, a, a Bucky's? Before? I've never been been to a Bucky's. No. The best way I can describe it is if a gas station and mm-hmm. Big Bass Pro had a baby, you have Bucky's. Okay. They, they're selling <sighs> grills there. I mean, they, they, <laughs> fire pit grills, you know, that bunch of hunting I just want to know, like, the story behind, behind who decided, I'm going to create this gas station that's this, and it and it actually, like, came into fruition. Because I feel like that's one of those concepts that somebody, everyone's be like, no, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and then somehow, like, it's like somebody was uh, dumb enough to kind of keep it going forward, and then it was awesome. So... Testament to that, the, but I, yeah, I'll have to get out there soon. I, I, I again, I'm probably the last person that hasn't been there yet. You know, uh, have you been to California before? Once. So I just got back a few weeks ago. Okay. There's Teslas everywhere, man. Yeah. There's like Honda Civics out there. Yeah. So when I see Bucky's and I see 125 gas pumps, <laughs> is this long term? Like well, maybe we can convert half of them into multiplex uh, <laughs> units one day. Who knows? That's, that's I, I, it. Crossed my mind too. Um, you know, so what's, uh, one of your favorite trips that you all been on? Uh, the Mediterranean, uh, our okay. honeymoon. Yeah. We, we took a, what parts, uh, France, Italy, and okay, Spain. So more the European part of the Mediterranean. Okay. Yeah. I've been to the, uh, Middle Eastern part of the Mediterranean, but yeah, it's beautiful. Um, favorite date night restaurant. Where are you guys going? Carson's all day. We just need another one though. Cause it's, it's just I can't get it. You can't get in there anymore. <laughs> no, the classic Yogi Bearism. Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. So, for any of you baseball fans out there, it was one of your since moving to Kentucky. What's one of your kind of favorite things about it? You know, I'm sure friends were like, "You're moving to Kentucky." Like, oh. what? <laughs> I'm sure there's a you know that whole stigma that comes with it. So, oh. you know, what's that been like as far as when they've come to visit or sh- what do you show them? Showing them? It's you know one of my best friends who was my best man. Uh, I told him I was moving to Kentucky, and he's like, "You just couldn't make it in California, could you?" I said, "Man, that's 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 rough." Oh, and guess where he lives now? Kentucky. He lives in Kentucky, five acres. Um, my favorite thing about Kentucky, it reminds me of what I grew up in, like what it used to be, sure, before it got all inflated. Um, and I worry that's going to happen here, kind of like in Nashville. But you know. Yeah, the different food. Um, I love. I used to work with horses back in California, so I love seeing all the landscape, you know, all the, the the horse barns and yeah. you know, tobacco barns. Yeah, um, you know, just the overall look of it, the location. And I, I love y'all. Yeah, I love yeah. y'all. You've adopted the y'all, y'all. Yeah, it's so much easier to prefer, just say the y'all. Yeah, you know, it just slides off the tongue. Yeah. Y'all can't get in trouble with that one either. From misappropriating somebody hey y'all um anyway uh is anybody wanted to kind of get in touch with you as far as uh again wanting to buy some real estate buy a house uh just pick your brain on stuff uh or uh figure out where they can get your uh, award-winning barbecue where are they going to do that at? <laughs> uh justlistedkentucky.com justlistedkentucky.com and if they can reach you 
Is there an email or phone number? Uh, yeah, Jeremy Perryman Realtor at gmail.com. Uh, and then my phone number is 859-363-5994. Well, Jeremy, appreciate your time today. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, everybody, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, we'll check us out next week on another episode of Keys to the Commonwealth podcast. Jeremy, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me. To learn more about this podcast, visit our page at keystothecommonwealth.com. To connect with Landry regarding insuring your investment portfolio, email Landry at novainsurancegroup.com or call 859-687-2004.